This Quicken 3.0 for Windows instruction video guide was designed to make your Quicken experience exactly that, a quick, efficient tool to managing your finances. After watching this video, you'll literally be able to see your finances like never before and have a better understanding of your financial future as well. This video will cover Quicken from beginning to end. We'll begin by helping you set up your first account and eventually take you through the steps to project your net worth two years down the road, track investments that you've made or want to make, create professional reports and graphs, and plan for retirement. You'll be able to do this and much more with confidence and ease. This video has also been designed for you to watch while sitting at your computer so you can follow along. We assume you already have Windows version 3.1 or higher and Quicken version 3.0 for Windows installed on your computer. So, if you're ready, let's begin. In the Program Manager of Windows, you can see the Quicken 3.0 for Windows icon. Double-click the icon now with the mouse to begin our Quicken session. If you have a VGA monitor, you'll be asked if you want to see tutorials for Windows and Quicken. The Windows tutorial covers the very basics of Windows operations. The Quicken tutorial gives a quick tour of the features this video will cover in detail. For our purposes, we're going to skip past this option, but if you wish to see them now, stop the videotape. Restart the video when you've completed the tutorials. The first time setup window now appears asking you to choose a set of categories. You may choose home or business depending on your preference. We will choose the home category for practice. Quicken 3.0 for Windows comes with many categories for your convenience. However, you may add, customize, or delete categories to personalize your needs. We will cover this area soon. After selecting your category, click the OK button with the mouse or press the Enter key on your keyboard. The Select Account Type window now appears along with a small description box above it. These boxes are called cue cards and you'll see them occasionally in Quicken to help you. If you want more information on a cue card topic, clicking the question mark button will give you more detailed information. Clicking the button that looks like a book will give a page number you can reference in your user's guide. If you ever want the cue card to disappear, click the minus box located in the upper left hand corner of the cue card. We will begin with a simple checking account, so click the bank account dot. You'll be able to add as many accounts as you like in the future for all of your needs. Now click the OK button or press enter. The new account information window appears. If you are following along on your computer, you will need to have your most recent bank statement with you at this time to enter the correct amount in the balance box. Quicken will use this figure when your next bank statement arrives to correctly balance your checkbook. If you feel like you're being rushed into Quicken at this point, it's perfectly understandable. Quicken has been designed to record information on your first account before continuing on to the main screen. Once our first account has been entered, we will take you through all of the functions, commands, and features Quicken 3.0 for Windows has to offer in a clear and helpful manner. Our sample account balance is $8,491.33 as of the date that was printed on our most recent bank statement. Do not use today's date. You may click the down arrow button to pop up a small calendar. The date from our bank statement was May 15, 1994. Click on this date. We can optionally enter any other description of our account now or at a later time. We're ready to continue, so click the OK button. Quicken displays our checking account register of our first account. The date and amount of the first transaction matches what we entered from our bank statement. We've now finished setting up our first account. Notice the design of the register is very similar to a register a bank provides. When you first start using Quicken, limit yourself to one or two accounts for the first month or so until you become proficient with the Quicken features. You can change the dimensions of the window boxes in a variety of ways to view information more easily. Here's how to change the size of most windows boxes. Move the mouse to the side of the window. 
Notice the arrow changes to a measurement sign. Press and hold on the mouse button. Now you can change the side border of the window to your liking. With the mouse, click the close button or double click the minus button in the upper left hand corner to close our register for now. This is the main screen of Quicken 3.0 for Windows. If you're familiar with the Windows programs, it looks very similar to many programs such as WordPerfect, Word for Windows, and Excel. Many of the menu commands work in the same way as well. If you're new to Windows, we will cover these menus for you. A good reference for any Quicken user can be found on the back cover of the Getting Started Guide. Here you'll find all menu commands for Quicken. Move the mouse to the word File and click once. The File menu of commands is displayed. Whenever you choose a command from any of the menus, you may point the mouse arrow to it and click once, or you may hold down the mouse button and scan the commands. Once you release the mouse button, that command will be executed. This video demonstrates Quicken features using predominantly the mouse. If you prefer using the keyboard for shortcut and quick key commands, a good keyboard reference is located on the back cover of your user's guide. The file menu has commands that perform functions to your file. You can create new files, open existing files, backup and print your files. The exit command is located here to quit Quicken 3.0 and return you to Windows. There are special commands here such as passwords to secure your files from others having access. An arrow on the right indicates subcommands of this command. To make this menu disappear, click the mouse arrow anywhere outside the menu box. Below the menu bar is the icon bar. The icon bar with icon indicators are like shortcut keys for regularly executed tasks. These are Quicken's most commonly used menu items. The accounts list icon displays the accounts you have. The category list icon displaying categories for transactions. The register icon showing the register we just used and registers of your other accounts. The reconcile icon button when you are ready to reconcile your bank statement. The check icon when you want to write a check. The print icon to print checks, reports, graphs, etc. A graph icon to create and look at personal financial graphs a report icon to create personal reports, the calendar icon to view your financial calendar so you can schedule bill payments, design a financial planner, and view your projected net worth in the future, the prefs icon so you can modify how Quicken 3.0 for Windows looks and operates to your preferences, a use account icon to open a specific account, and finally the help icon a useful feature when you have questions or problems using Quicken. You can always add, delete, or create new icon buttons to speed up your work. Clicking the mouse arrow once on an icon button will execute a function. Many of the menus that are going to be shown perform tasks using your financial figures, and to show what they can do clearly, we need to provide more information so it's time to bring our checking account up to date. Click the first button on the left of the icon bar, which is the Accounts List button. Our account information is displayed. Click the Use button to make an update. The check register is displayed again. Just like reconciling a bank statement, we need to enter checks that were not included in the latest statement, checks that have not cleared, any other deductions as well as additions such as deposits that have transpired since the latest statement. Enter these transactions into our register as if it were the back side of a bank statement. Here's how you do it. Get out your actual checkbook and refer to your register or just follow along in our example for now. This video will use an imaginary checkbook account and we begin by entering all outstanding checks. In the date column, enter the date of the outstanding check. You may type the date or click the mouse pointer on the down arrow button to use the pop-up calendar. Point and click on the left or right arrow key at the top of the calendar to select the correct month. Then click on the date the check was written. In our case, it is June 1, 1994. Now point and click the mouse over to the next column, the numbers column. 
A drop-down menu appears with a variety of choices. Enter the check number. We'll enter check number 1014. From now on, we will be able to use the next check number option in this column and Quicken will automatically enter our next check number, check number 1015. Point and click on the payee box. Type in the name of who the check was written to. Point and click the mouse arrow to the next column, the payment column. A faster way to move to the next column is accomplished by pressing the tab key on your keyboard and tab over to the next column. If you've tabbed over, you notice the cursor moved over to the payment box. Quicken 3.0 for Windows automatically detects whether your entry is a payment or deposit by what we chose in the numbers column. We continue by typing in the amount of the check. Press the tab key once to quickly move over to the memo box or point and click the mouse arrow to that location. Type in a short description of the check if you wish. Entering a memo for a transaction is optional. Press the tab key to move on to the category box. A drop down menu appears. You need to choose a category for all transactions so Quicken can track, graph, and report on many things about your financial profile. Quicken has many built-in categories for you to choose from with a short description of each. Later on, you'll see how to add your own categories or delete others to customize your work. Let's browse through all the categories Quicken offers to give you an idea on how you can track your income and expenses. Move the mouse arrow to the scroll bar on the side of the menu. Point to the down arrow and hold down the mouse button. Your category choices are scrolled up the list. You may also use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to move the highlight bar through the menu. For now, we're going to choose housing since our check was for that item, so click on that category. Now press the tab key again to move the cursor down to the record button. Press the enter key. To accomplish the same task, you can also point and click on the record button once. Our transaction is now recorded into the register. This is confirmed by two beeps from our computer. Soon, you'll be entering all your transactions in the register very quickly and easily with practice. Let's enter an incorrect transaction to show what to do if you make an error. Record an ATM withdrawal dated 5-28-94, which was used to go to the movies. We withdrew $20, but accidentally recorded the amount as $200. There are two ways to correct this. One way is to point and click the mouse in the payment box and type in the correct amount and re-record the transaction by clicking on the record button. The second method is to delete the transaction entirely and record a new one. To delete a transaction, point the mouse arrow anywhere in the entry you wish to delete, then point and click on the delete icon button. To prevent you from accidentally erasing an entry, Quicken displays a window asking you to confirm the delete command as a safeguard. Click the yes button to remove the transaction. A beep confirms this. You must now re-enter the transaction to record it. Let's enter a deposit into our account. Point and click on the date column. Select 53094. Tab or click over to the Numbers column and select Deposit. DEP appears in the column confirming our deposit entry. Point and click on the Payee column. Although we're not entering a payee, you can type a description of your deposit or you can skip past this column. Press the Tab key. Quicken automatically positions the cursor to the Deposit column. Our deposit was in the amount of $2,166.48, so type the amount and then point and click to the next column, the memo column. Type a brief description if you wish, then click over to the category column. The list of categories is displayed again. The deposit was a paycheck and this person is paid a salary income by their employer, so we would want to click on the salary category. Before recording this transaction, you can memorize this entry for future use. To do this, point and click on the entry you want to memorize. 
In this case, the salary deposit. Select the Edit menu and choose Memorize Transaction. A display window appears informing you that the transaction is going to be memorized. Press OK and a beep from the computer confirms this. Now, click the Record button to record this transaction into the checking account register. If you are following along on your computer, stop this tape and continue to enter all transactions not included on your latest bank statement. When you've finished, restart this tape. If you are following along with our examples, we are going to use a sample account that was previously reconciled for time purposes. It is time to describe the features and functions that Quicken 3.0 for Windows has to offer. Select Close to close the register for now. With an up-to-date account, let's go over to the menu bar, beginning with the File menu. As was mentioned earlier, the File menu is where you'll find commands to manipulate your Quicken files. Creating, opening, and backing up your files is all done here. To open a file, click on the word Open. Keyboard shortcut keys are shown on the right side of the line for many commands in the menu bar. We'll see the Open Quicken File dialog box. In this video, we are going to use our sample file, so we will point and click on the file sample .qdt. The files in the current directory are displayed in the box on the left. You can select a different disk drive by clicking on the Drives box to open a file from another disk. We have selected the file we wish to use, so click the OK button. The file is opened and the register of our sample checking account is displayed. We will minimize our register to continue our tour through the menu bar by clicking on the down arrow box in the upper right hand corner of the register. As you can see, this collapses our register into an icon on the bottom of the screen. Nothing has changed to our register other than appearance. You can do this to free up screen space or to pause a utility you don't want to use for a while. Click on the File menu again. Select the File Operations command. This command has subcommands indicated again by the arrow on the right. This command allows you to copy, delete, or rename Quicken files. The next command is Year End Copy. This command allows you to transfer all transactions to a separate file and start a new one for the next year. This command is optional and is for advanced users. Move down to the next command, Passwords. Again, this function can be used to prevent others from accessing your data. You can set up passwords to lock an entire file or individual transactions. It is a good idea to write down your password and keep it in a safe place. The backup command saves your files to another source, such as a floppy disk drive or tape backup. Click on this command. It is vital to back up your files frequently so as not to lose any data in case of a problem with your computer. Quicken 3.0 for Windows includes a nice feature. Periodically, Quicken reminds you that you have not backed up your file. To save your file, select the disk drive you want to use. In this case, Drive A. And select the OK button. The Restore command restores files that you have backed up using the Backup command. Use this command when you have accidentally lost data on your computer. The Import and Export commands are similar to copying files, except with these commands you can import or export specific details within your file. For example, you can export your accounts list and memorize transactions to a floppy disk rather than an entire file of data. The Printer Setup function has two features. You can adjust how you want your reports and graphs printed and set up your printer functions in general. Quicken 3.0 for Windows default printer settings match what you already have installed for Windows, and you usually don't need to change these unless you want to print your documents in color or with a specific paper size. The Print Checks command is used when you are ready to print out your checks on your dot matrix or laser printer. If you are going to use the check writing and printing features in Quicken 3.0 for Windows, you need to have special checks ordered for your specific printer. If you prefer to handwrite your checks, Quicken is still a powerful resource in managing your finances. 
If you are interested in using computerized checks from Intuit Incorporated, refer to your user's guide for check order information. The print command is what you would use when you are ready to print any part of your file. One click of the mouse on this button will perform the same task, but faster. Finally, the exit command closes the Quicken application and returns you to Windows. Double-clicking the mouse arrow on the minus box in the upper left-hand corner of Quicken will perform the same command. The next menu on the menu bar is the edit menu. The first command found in this menu is the undo feature. This handy function can be used if you make an error and want to undo the mistake. The last function you made will be reversed to continue from that point. Next on the menu are the cut, copy, and paste functions. These three commands are related and are very useful. When you select text, the cut command will remove the item from the file but not delete it. Windows stores the selection in the clipboard. Using the paste command, pastes your selection to the new location. Copy works in the same manner except selected text is not removed but copied and can be pasted anywhere in the file or a different file. The following command in the edit menu is the new transaction command. You can select this function when you want to enter a new transaction in your account register. Generally, this command is not necessary because your register automatically creates a new transaction line at the bottom of the register. The edit command edits an item in a list or a price list. The delete transaction key does exactly that. It deletes a selected transaction. This same command is also found on the icon bar of your register. Insert transaction inserts a new entry in between existing entries. The void transaction command voids a selected entry and adjusts your account balance. The copy and paste transaction features work similar to the command shown above, except they copy and paste entire entries. These two commands are also found on the icon bar at the top of the register. You can memorize transactions that occur frequently, such as a salary income deposit, mortgage or rent payment, or an auto payment. As was demonstrated earlier, this command can make your financing efficient and easy. The next two items in the edit menu are the find and go to transfer functions. Using these commands helps you locate a specific transaction quickly and accurately. Finally, the preference command, also found on your icon bar. This command allows you to change the design, style, and colors of Quicken. The five remaining menus on the menu bar will be demonstrated in detail, but not in that order. To better illustrate these features, we will use the commands in association with our account information. Using a financial calendar is a great way to enter payments and deposits that are coming up. Schedule single transactions or recurring transactions like your mortgage payment. With Quicken 3.0 for Windows Financial Calendar, you can see exactly what lies ahead and plan your spending more efficiently. Point and click on the Calendar icon button. Your financial calendar is displayed. Quicken has a month-by-month -month calendar. Think of expenses and deposits coming up that you already know about. You may know that you will be paid every two weeks, that you pay rent once a month, that the car needs servicing soon, or you know there's a trip you're saving up for in a few months. You can schedule all of this and more in your calendar. The calendar shows you bills that are due and then enters them automatically into your register on the date they are due. For one-time bills, this is a useful reminder. For recurring bills, you're putting your bills on autopilot. You can have quick and prompt you, however, before any transactions are entered into your register automatically. On the right side of the calendar is a small notepad. This memo pad reminds you of financial events. The memo pad can be turned on or off clicking the list button. Clicking the plan button turns on or off your financial planner graph. It is displayed below the calendar and is used for what if scenarios. You can project your future net worth one month, six months, or two years into the future using estimates in a created budget. The previous and next buttons select the next or previous months on the calendar. Select the note button. By selecting a date followed by the note button, you can type in color-coded personal reminders to help you stay organized. 
Once you selected the Save button, a small colored box appears in the upper right-hand corner of the date you chose. The Close button closes the calendar. The main feature of the financial calendar is to set up scheduled transactions. You can set up a scheduled transaction two ways. Click on the List menu, then select Schedule Transaction. Or you can double-click the mouse arrow on a specific day on the calendar. Click New for a new entry. You now see the setup menu in which you enter details for the future transaction. First, click the down arrow box in the Type of Transaction category. You can select PMT for Payment, DEP for Deposit, or CHK if you're going to write a check with Quicken. Please note that if you're going to be handwriting checks, you should select Payment, not Check. In this example, we want to set up a scheduled payment to the landlord of an apartment. Pressing the Tab key moves the cursor to the Payee field. Type in the name of the landlord, Shady Acres Apartments. Press the Tab key again to move down to the Memo field. Type in Monthly Rent. Tab down to the Category field. Select the appropriate expense, Housing or Rent. Tab down to the Amount field. Type in the amount of the monthly rent, $500 even. This information will be entered into your register when it occurs. Now, tab down to the Schedule Information box. Enter the next rent payment due date. Use the pop-up calendar if you want by clicking on the down arrow box. Once you've selected a date, move down to the Frequency of Payment field by clicking on the down arrow box in that field. As you can see, you can select a one-time only payment, monthly or even yearly payments. Select Monthly. Tab over to the Number of Payments field. If you know exactly how many months you'll be making this payment, enter the number now. Otherwise, leave this number at 999 if you want Quicken to record this payment indefinitely. Now, move down to the Register Information category. Quicken can enter scheduled transactions with or without asking you to confirm them. We will leave this field alone and have Quicken prompt us every time this payment is due. You could select Planning Only. This option will not record the transaction, but instead allows you to create what-if scenarios in planning graphs, which will be covered shortly. Now, select the account that will be affected by this transaction. In this example, the checking account. Quicken can record the scheduled transaction days in advance of the payment if you wish. This may be useful for you so you can send your bills in the mail promptly. If you want to split a transaction's category listing, you would select the Splits button. This feature splits up categories of one transaction for more detailed tracking of your spending. The Address button is used if you are writing checks with Quicken. Mailing information can be entered here for the landlord. Finally, the Group button is used if you want to set up a transaction group for certain payments that you find occurring at the same time. We've completed filling in the necessary information for a scheduled transaction, so click the OK button. When a scheduled payment is due, Quicken will prompt you. Analyzing your finances is probably one of the main reasons why you purchased Quicken 3.0 for Windows. You can analyze your finances numerous ways using Quicken's built-in reports and graphs. All of the reports and graphs can be customized as well, so you can narrow in on a particular interest. Point and click on the Reports icon button. The Create Report box appears so you can generate a report. As you can see, you can create a report within specific dates and create a home, business, or specialized report. Quicken has numerous built-in reports for all three choices. Click the Home Report dot if it is not selected already. Scanning the choices, you can see the reports Quicken can easily create. A cash flow report, monthly budget, tax summary, net worth, comparison report, and more. For this example, select Cash Flow. Click on the OK button. Your cash flow report is generated very quickly with details of all your inflow and outflow entries. You can customize how the report looks and is to be printed by selecting the Customize icon button and you can view specific accounts and categories. Printing your report is easy. Just click the Print icon button. 
Exploring all the different reports Quicken creates is the best way to familiarize yourself with your choices and to find which report fits your needs. To illustrate your finances in a more visual and colorful manner, you can create various types of pie charts and bar graphs. Quicken graphs are useful to analyze your income and expenses, develop better budgets, determine your net worth, and evaluate your investment portfolio. To create a graph, click the Graphs icon button once. The Create Graphs box appears. The first thing to do is to select a date range you want to see. Keeping the date range to less than a year is easier to see. You can also select a range as short as one month. Now select the type of graph you want to create. There are four choices, an income and expense graph that compares your spending to your earnings, a budget variance graph which compares your budgeted income and expenses to your actual income and expenses, a net worth graph, and an investment graph that displays information to help you evaluate your investment portfolio and the price history of your securities. Select the income and expense graph dot with the mouse if it isn't selected already. The field below offers you the choice of viewing subcategories of categories. Leaving this option turned off can make graphs easier to see, excluding subcategories without data. Finally, you can filter graphs to include or exclude specific accounts, categories, or classes. Filtering a graph works in the same manner as customizing a report. When you're ready to see the graph, click the Create button once. The date range we selected is illustrated in two graphs. A bar graph shows our monthly spending and earnings, and the pie chart divides our savings and expenses into percentages accompanied with a legend. The pie chart shows the largest 10 categories. These are three-dimensional graphs. If you want to view the graphs two-dimensionally, which is faster for your computer to generate, or you prefer patterns instead of colors, select Preferences from the icon bar. You can change graph designs there. An exciting feature Quicken offers with graphs is the Quick Zoom. Let's say you're reviewing your expenses and want to see details for the month of May. Position the mouse arrow onto the bar graph for that month. Notice the mouse arrow changes to a small magnifying glass with a letter Z in the middle. This symbol indicates you can perform a quick zoom of this graph. By double-clicking the magnifying glass on the bar graph, you can see Quicken inflate a window with details of your spending. If you're not satisfied with the information you see, double-click on the new pie chart and Quicken inflates an even more detailed window showing specific details of the transaction straight from your register. Printing any of these graphs is very easy. Click on the Print icon button and your graph is automatically printed. To close an inflated quick zoom window, double click the mouse arrow on the minus bar in the upper left hand corner of the window. Taking control of your finances begins with thoughtful planning. Quicken doesn't just track where your money's been going, it also gives you a clear picture of your financial future. Quicken 3.0 for Windows offers many financial planning tools including five financial planning calculators so you can try out what-if scenarios. Scenarios for loan planning and refinancing, investment savings, college planning, and retirement planning. You can use the budget spreadsheet to keep track of where your money goes. Enter estimates of your earnings and spending habits and later compare those estimates with actual records in a comparison graph or report. Plan an entire year with Quicken's budget spreadsheet. Move the mouse arrow to the Activities menu and click once. Now select Financial Planner. Your five financial planning calculators are shown. Select the Loan Financial Planner. For this example, we want to borrow $14,684.32 from the bank to buy a new car. Enter that amount in the Loan Amount field. Tab down to the next field. The bank is offering an 8.4% interest rate, so type in 8.4. Tab down again. How many years is this loan going to be? This loan will be a 10-year loan. Move down to the next field. This example loan will have monthly payments, so enter 12. 
press the tab key once. The monthly calculated payment for this loan should read $181.28. This is the amount your payments will be for 10 years to pay off your car. Now point and click on the Schedule button. An approximate payment schedule is created showing the number of payments in months, the principal and interest owed, and the balance remaining on the loan. To print this schedule, press the Print button with the mouse. Let's close this planner and do another one. Again, select the Activities menu, choose Financial Planner, but this time select Retirement. Quicken displays the Retirement Planner. Begin by entering in the amount of your current savings. For example, suppose you are 38 years old and plan to retire at age 65. Your IRA account currently has $20,000 in it and you plan to contribute $2,000 to it annually until you retire. You've inherited genes for long life, so you plan to withdraw from the account until age 85. With an annual yield of 8%, complete the rest of the retirement information. You need to provide tax information for Quicken to perform its calculations. This example account is tax sheltered, so click the tax sheltered investment. Quicken presets the retirement tax rate at 15%. In the calculate category, there are three choices to see your future. If you select the current savings, Quicken calculates the amount you need to start with to meet your projected goals. If you select annual contribution, Quicken calculates how much you need to contribute to your retirement account each year to meet your goals. If you select Annual Retirement Income, Quicken calculates how much a particular investment will be worth given your estimated tax rate and all contributions. In the Inflation category, you can display your retirement income in today's dollars or you can clear this bottom checkbox to show income in future dollars based on a predicted 4% inflation rate which you can change. Using the Annual Retirement Income Calculator and selecting Annual Income in today's dollars, the Annual Income after taxes would be $6,891.44. Selecting the Schedule button will display the deposit schedule. Notice as you scroll down the schedule, deposits are shown up to age 65 and that is when you begin to withdraw until the age of 85. You can use Quicken to budget all of your income and expenses or just a few of them. To set up a budget from the activities menu choose set up budgets. A blank budget is shown with inflow and outflow categories. On the top edge of the budget you can see an icon bar. The auto button automatically enters amounts based on historical data from your register. Select the Edit Icon button. There are six features. You can set up an item here that occurs at two week intervals. Copy budget figures to the Windows clipboard. Clear the row of a category. Clear the entire budget. Copy the same amount to all cells to the right of a selected month, such as June through December. Or copy amounts in one column to the column on the right, such as April and May. The Layout icon button changes the display of your budget. A useful feature here is to hide zero budget categories. This can reduce the length of your budget by excluding categories that you don't use, making the budget easier to read. The Save button saves the budget figures to disk, and the Restore button restores the budget to its original figures. The Close icon button closes the budget. Please remember to save your budgets before closing them. Let's enter a budget figure in the Rent Paid category listed under Outflows. Scroll down until you see the category, then point and click on the zero figure for the month of January. Type in the amount of $500. Now select the Edit Icon button. Choose Fill Row Right. $500 is filled in through the month of December. To illustrate other Quicken features that use figures from a created budget and for time purposes, we will use an existing budget from this point on. With an existing budget, you can create and print budget reports or budget graphs as was shown earlier. You can also use Quicken's Crystal Globe. To do so, select the Financial Calendar icon button. 
We see the calendar which was described previously. Point and click on the plan icon button at the top of the calendar. Quicken displays a financial plan that lets you literally see into the future. The bar graph is derived from the budget you created and relies on your estimates. The graph projects what your account balance will most likely look like in the near future. Balances before today are shown in yellow. Projected balances are shown in blue, and the green bar indicates which day is selected on the financial calendar. Quicken's projections will be as accurate as you make them. You can look at your crystal globe to see one month from now or two years into the future by selecting the Dates button. The Save button saves the scenario that we've just created. But remember, this is just a scenario. By clicking the Worksheet button, Quicken creates a quick estimate of your average income and expenses. Quicken can either auto-create a worksheet by reading data from your historical register transactions or use figures from your budget spreadsheet if you have one set up. Since we have a created budget spreadsheet, selecting this option will give a monthly estimate of our finances. You can change any of the figures in the worksheet by clicking on the figure you want to change. After a few months, you may want to compare what has actually happened to your account balances with what you thought was going to happen. When you have finished setting up your planning worksheet, you can save it as a projection. With the planning graph displayed, click the Save button. Now select one of the Scenario buttons. Click the Save button to save the projection. Notice the additional line on the graph. This is your saved projection. To get rid of the line from your graph, click the Save button again, select None, and click OK. In a few months, click on the Save button again and select the scenario, and you can see the comparison. It's now time to show Advanced Quicken 3.0 for Windows features that can help you keep a close watch on your loans and mortgages, credit card transactions, cash transactions, assets and liabilities, and investments. Quicken can automatically track the amortization of a loan. This was illustrated somewhat in the financial planning calculator examples. Amortization is the gradual reduction of a loan by periodically paying off the principal as well as the interest. Although your total payment each time is the same, the split between principal and interest is always changing. Quicken can handle many different aspects of a loan, including variable interest rates, balloon payments, and negative amortization. You can also track payments you receive for a loan. To set up a loan from the Activities menu, choose Set Up Loans. The View Loans window appears. This is the main information window for all of your loans. Click on the New button to set up the new loan. Fill in the loan account information and click OK. For this example, we're going to demonstrate how to track an existing loan. The example is for a home on 320 Oak Street. The new account name will be 320 Oak Street. There are two common scenarios for setting up a loan. One, you are describing a brand new bank loan, or two, you are describing an existing bank loan but are setting it up in Quicken as of today. It's good to point out that you would not enter previous loan payments into Quicken before the date you started tracking loans with Quicken. This example shows a 15-year mortgage for $100,000 that was taken out on 6 5 89. The current balance, meaning today's balance, on 6-4-94 is $77,412.67. If you make monthly payments, enter the periods per year as 12. If your loan includes a balloon payment, click the Due In checkbox and enter the total number of years in which the loan must be paid off, that is, counting from the beginning of the loan. For more information on balloon payments, see page 324 of your user's guide. Canadian users, make sure Canadian compounding is selected so that Quicken calculates interest on the basis of semi-annual compounding. A helpful hint, if you want more information on what to enter in most boxes of Quicken, 
Click on the box in question, then press F1 for online help. Now click OK and the Setup Loan Payment window appears. Enter the payment details here. If your loan has a variable interest rate, enter the current rate. You can change the rate whenever your interest rate changes. Quicken determines how much your regular payments should be by calculating the interest rate and the information you entered in the previous window. To include impounding fees such as homeowners insurance and property tax in your regular payments, click the split button and enter details of the impound items. Transaction information needs to be entered. What type of transaction will this be? Select check if you want to write computer checks with Quicken for the loan payment or payment if you are handwriting checks. Select EMPT or electronic payment if you use check free to make payments. If you select check, you can enter the payee's address by clicking the address button. Method of payment specifies the method by which Quicken should enter the payment transaction in your register. Click on Pay Now if you want to enter the first payment in your register now, or otherwise click OK to return to the View Loans window. Your loan is set up and should look similar to this if you're following along. These are the basics on how to track loans with Quicken. For more information, see your user's guide. Credit cards can be an important part of personal and business finances. You can either track your credit cards by using your Quicken bank account or a separate Quicken credit card account. Let's demonstrate how to manage credit cards using our existing bank account. Suppose your credit card statement for one month shows seven new transactions, five are clothing and two are gifts. You also need to pay a finance charge. Open up your checking account register. Enter the payment as usual except for the category field. Click Splits instead. Categorize the first line with the category Gifts and type the amount you spent on the first line. Categorize the second line with the category Clothing and enter the amount. Categorize the third line as finance charges and enter the charge. If your figures add up correctly, the remainder should be zero, shown in the lower right hand corner. Click OK to close the split, then click record to record the transaction. You should reconcile your credit card statement as you do your bank statement. If you're interested in updating credit card accounts using Intuit's IntelliCharge Electronic Services, see your user's guide. With Quicken's asset and liability accounts, you can track such things as loan balances, lines of credit, capital equipment, 401k retirement plans, and the tax basis of your home. Quicken creates a home net worth report and a business balance sheet that combines balances too. If you have a small business, you can use Quicken Asset Accounts to track accounts receivable and a liability account to track accounts payable. To set up an additional account, click on the Activities menu at the top of the screen and choose Create New Account. Quicken 3.0 for Windows can help you track investments in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and other investments that fluctuate in price. Quicken shows if you are making or losing money on each investment. Quicken investment account registers are similar to standard account registers. However, unlike the standard account registers, there is a Portfolio View button at the bottom of the window. This feature shows you current market values, return on investments, price changes, and other essential information. Quicken lets you create charts and graphs that track price histories of securities and other investments, as well as print reports. 
A table on page 161 of the user's guide suggests what type of Quicken account to use with different types of investments. Quicken 3.0 for Windows can simplify the preparation of your federal income tax return and related tax schedules. You can produce a tax schedule report and capital gains report that lists the exact amounts to fill in for your tax forms and schedules. Here's how you would set up categories when the dreaded April 15th approaches. If you want to create tax schedule reports, you have to set up Quicken to use tax schedules with categories. To do so, select the Edit menu, choose Preferences, and then choose General. Make sure the Use Tax Schedules with Categories checkbox is selected. From the Lists menu, choose Category and Transfer or click on the Cat List icon button. Select the category or subcategory that you want to be tax related and click Edit. If you want to create tax summary reports, select the Tax Related option. If you want to create tax schedule reports, select the tax schedule line item for that category using the form drop down menu. Once that is selected, click OK. To create and print a tax schedule report, click on the reports icon button. The check writing features Quicken offers is quick and easy, but involves special preparation and requirements. Therefore, we've delayed demonstrating this feature until now. Having Quicken write your checks is a great convenience. By printing your checks with Quicken and your computer printer, you avoid the duplicate work of writing checks and then recording them. You can save time, avoid clerical errors, and give your checks a very professional look. In order to write and print checks, you must first order special checks that meet your printer requirements. Many business supply companies provide pre-printed checks for laser and dot matrix printers. Refer to Appendix B in the User's Guide if you are interested in supplies from Intuit. If you do order computer checks, here's how to write out a check. From the Activities menu, choose Write Checks, or a much faster way is to click on the Check icon button. The Write Check window is displayed. Select the bank account the payment is being made from. Change the selected date if you wish. Enter the payee's name as it would appear on the check. Tab over to enter the amount of the check on the amount line. Press the tab key. Notice that Quicken automatically spells out the amount of the check on the next line. If you plan to mail the check in a window envelope, enter the payee's address, otherwise leave this section blank. Tab down to the memo line and type in an optional memo. Tab over to the category line and enter a category for this check. When you are finished, click on the record button. The check has been saved and recorded into your register. A note, the write checks window does not display a check number. Most computer checks you order are pre-numbered because most banks require pre-numbered checks for stop payment purposes. Quicken inserts the correct check number in the register when the check is printed. Until you print the check, the number field in the register will read print. To print checks, click on the file menu, choose printer setup, then choose check printer setup. Select the printer you want from the drop down list. Select auto detect in the paper feed list to detect whether your printer is continuous feed or page oriented. Select a style of check to print. Click on font if you want to change the appearance of the check. As you can see, you can import a logo for your checks too. Make sure your printer is set up and the checks are loaded properly, then you can click OK. Now click on the file menu again and choose print checks. That is the basics to using Quicken's check writing and printing features. Another advanced Quicken notability is the check-free service. With it, you can pay bills electronically using your personal computer and a modem. The service is offered by Check-Free Corporation of Columbus, Ohio. 
With it, you can enter bills directly into Quicken and then tell Quicken to send the information to CheckFree via your modem. The CheckFree service is a subscription service and is not endorsed by the producers or distributors of this video. Products and supplies offered by Intuit Incorporated are not endorsed by the producers or distributors of this video either. This concludes the Learning Quicken 3.0 for Windows instructional video. A reminder, if you would like additional help, you can use the online tutorial. The tutorial can be found under the Help menu by choosing Tutorials, followed by choosing Introduction to Quicken. We hope this video has been a useful guide for you, helping you become a confident and proficient user of Quicken for your personal or business financial needs.